It will happen sooner or later. The American presidential chase will return to the more mundane and controversial issues of the day. Terrorism and the need for greater gun control and homeland security will still be there at the forefront. But issues such as taxes, jobs, government regulations will rule the day as we head towards the conventions and the November elections. Guaranteed to raise its on compromise, we can never find any compromise head of discourse, will be climate change. The effects of industry on the environment, the jobs that will be affected, a planet seeking to ensure coastal cities are not underwater by the time our kids are getting married, and the absolute denial by a large group of people that the issue is even an issue. Far too often, we ask ourselves a simple question. If science is so accurate so often, and if the evidence is there right in front of our faces to grasp and understand so easily, why is there such disagreement? Glad you asked. We will be asking you in mere moments to tell us if you see climate change as a major issue in the campaign and which side of the debate you fall on. So get online right now at 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629 to comment on one of the hottest or coldest issues in America. Our guest is president of the Heartland Institute, a national nonprofit research organization. They have published a relative book on this subject entitled Climate Change Reconsidered, and he is author of the new book, Why Do Scientists Agree About Global Warming? Let's welcome Joseph Bast to the hard line. Joseph, thanks so much for joining us. So let me get right to the question here then. Yeah. Because if you look at it, why do scientists disagree about global warming? I should say disagree is the big point here. Why do they? Isn't there a lot of evidence out there for us to make a very common sense decision? Uh, there's a number of reasons why scientists disagree about this. First, it's a hugely complex topic. Uh, it involves all sorts of different disciplines, uh, ranging from geologists to physicists to astronomers to solar physicists uh, and economists. So very few academics have expertise in enough fields to actually have an informed position on just what causes climate change. Um, another reason why there's so much disagreement, um, I think, is it's been politicized right from the start. Uh, the United Nations created the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, to discover the consensus of science on this issue, but in fact it became right away an agenda-driven, largely left-wing advocacy organization that took as settled the idea that there was a human impact and felt that their only mission was to show how big it was and what we should do to stop it. Well, let me get to some so of those, those numbers here, because we have a pretty good group of people, NASA, National that's Space Administration here. They're supposed to know what goes on around the planet here and in space. NASA says there's very little disagreement about the science community when it comes to climate change. Talking about research information from April 2016. They talk about papers expressing a position on climate change. But the end line here, an overwhelming percentage, 97 percent, endorses the scientific consensus on climate change. I see this 97 percent. Pretty much everywhere I see John Kerry mentions it, Barack Obama mentions it, a lot of pretty smart people mention it. Is that 97% really just bogus at the end of the day? It's absolutely bogus. It's absolutely wrong. It's the biggest myth in the whole global warming debate right now. If you go to the NASA website, uh, they have a whole page on consensus. The first footnote cites their four sources. One of them is a socialist historian writing a non-peer-reviewed article. Two of them are college student papers, and then they got their professors to join them as co-authors in order to get them published. And the fourth one is an Australian blogger, runs a blog site, wrote a book uh, about how global warming uh, skeptics have their head in the sand. I mean, he's not exactly a nonpartisan guy, and he's not a scientist. Those are the four sources at NASA sites in support of claiming that there's 97% consensus. Uh, there's a lot better research out there that shows that, in fact, climate scientists disagree about this. There's profound disagreements. Um, some of the best research uh, done by some German scientists, they do a survey of climate scientists all around the world. They find that about a third of the scientists believe that we know enough to actually be able to predict future climate and estimate the human impact. About a third of them are unsure, and a third of them say we can't, that there's probably no real evidence that uh, there's a measurable human impact or that it's going to be a bad impact on humanity. Now, this so is very interesting. Are all across the board. We have celebrity scientist Bill Nye. Now, he's been pretty outspoken about this. He's not a this. scientist. Ah, yeah, but I said celebrity. Scientist. Celebrity scientist is what I said. You're exactly right. Sure. But a celebrity scientist, Bill Nye. 
Now, he says there is overwhelming consensus in the science community on the direction of climate and global temperature. He challenged Joe Bastardi, a climate skeptic, uh, skeptic rather, to a wager. Here's what he said. Mr. Bastardi, I will bet you $10,000. I predict that the year 2016 will be among the top 10 hottest years ever recorded. This check could be yours if you take the bet, and it turns out not to be among the top 10 hottest years. But if it does, and you take the bet, you would owe me $10,000. Wait, I'll take it up a notch. I'll bet you another $10,000 that the decade 2010 to 2020 will prove to be the hottest decade ever recorded. Joseph, I got about 30, 40 seconds here. Is it not fair to say at the end of the day here, no matter what he says, anybody else says, Man cannot accurately predict what Mother Nature is going to do. I mean, isn't it just that simple? It is that simple. Nobody can predict what the temperature is going to be 10 years from now or 20 years from now. That's a ridiculous bet. You know, the satellite data don't show any warming for the last 18 years. Uh, this year is an El Nino year. Okay, it's very warm this year. It's almost certainly going to be cooler next year and the year after. It would be interesting to have a bet with him on years like that. Uh, but no, the models can't predict future climate conditions. Uh, of, of all the disagreement among real scientists on this issue, I think the one agreement is we simply don't know enough to know what the weather is going to be like 20 years from now. All just agree. Again, Mother Nature sits there. She does whatever she wants. She will zap us whenever she wants, and we can't do a darn thing about it because we just sit here and take it. It's just that easy. Uh, the book, again, is Why Do Scientists Disagree About Global Warming? And again, that whole 97%, it's time to get away from that, start getting down to some reality, at, at least as best as we can. Joseph Bass, thanks so much for joining us. You bet. Thank you. And it is fair to note exactly what we said there, that Bill Nye, while he's a great entertainer, we've interviewed him before, I've interviewed him before, he is not a real scientist. He is a celebrity scientist. Okay, one eight seven seven newsmax Let's go ahead and get a couple of calls before we get out of here. Matt from Lady Lake, Florida. Come on, Matt. Climate change is real. Aren't you sweltering right now? It's 147 degrees outside. I think, I think it's a joke. And if it isn't, what will they do about it? Well, they tell us, okay, now let me answer that. They tell us that if climate change is not a joke, that we need to worry about fossil fuel burning, we need to worry about other pollution, we need to bring the planet back to some sort of normalcy, if you will, because we as humans are the disease and we are the ones polluting the planet. That's what the one side will say. Uh, cows uh, passing wind as being a problem. Well, you are exactly correct because cow gas, if you will, is one of the greater problems, which last time I've checked, I don't think we can solve. No, I don't think so either. So you believe and it's a joke and you're not going to stand by this? No, and anything that Al Gore, Obama, or the Clintons are involved in, and they're all behind it, can't be good. It's got to be another lie, which they don't do anything but lie. All right. We appreciate your call, Matt. Thanks so much. And by the way, in Lady Lake, Florida, at this moment, it is actually 147 degrees. Dan's in Foster, Rhode Island. Dan, you wanted to switch real quick and go to gun control. Go ahead. Yep. Just wanted to go to gun control real quick, if I may. Um, go ahead. You know, there's a lot of things. Head, hands, and feet. People need to remember that there are people out there that are trained who don't have guns. And if you look at the statistics, and they are true statistics, you can multiply gun, de gun deaths a year by three. Uh, head, hands, and feet kill three times as many people every year. Okay, I'm going to play also, devil's advocate. And twice as many people die from alcohol accidents or injuries. Okay, than, hang on. I'm going to play devil's advocate with you, Dan. Okay? Sure. Just on the other side. If you have the ability to stop one person from being killed by a gun in the hand of a criminal, is that not a good thing? That's what the other side will say. Well, as a gun owner, and I will tell you, I don't agree with... 30, 60, 90 round clips. If you're a hunter, if you, can't, if you can't shoot a deer with one bullet, you shouldn't be hunting. Would you agree then? Here, 20 seconds. Do you think that private individuals should own assault-type rifles as a gun owner? No. See? And nope, you, unfortunately, would be somebody that numbers of gun owners and the people in the NRA would immediately rail against because they would say that you are completely wrong. That's where the argument comes in. Absolutely. I, I totally get that. But I'm saying that they, they're, they're never going to get them off the street. Just there you like go. They'll never get drugs The illegals, the they likely never will. Thanks a lot for your phone call. We appreciate it. We'll do more of this tomorrow. Make sure you join us because you're an important part of the show every single evening. Rock on, true believers. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow night back here on the hard line. Good night and good luck.